Hi there folks, welcome to Double R TV's live telecast of the Double R TV Rallycross Super Series and uh, we've joined a little bit late, we can, uh, as the first heat or the last chance qualifier is being run at the moment, but uh, Brock, it's a bit of a different uh, layout that uh, we're covering tonight. Yeah, so the format's changed a little bit tonight, uh, uh, again, Bernie, for this week, because we don't, we had a smaller turnout than what was expected. So uh, instead, right now, the last chance qualifier is actually made up of uh, two heats of, of 11 cars, each being run simultaneously. So we're obviously viewing this one. Um, and then there's another one being run, and the top eight from each of those heats will go through to the next, uh, to the semifinals. Uh, I believe that's how it's going to work. Yeah, that's right. So we lose three out of these simultaneous heats. After that, we're going to be running. We've only had uh, 22 drivers turn up tonight, folks. And uh, part of that, Brock, could be that uh, Lucas Oil's raceway isn't free content. And uh, it might have put a few of the drivers off. Yeah, I think you're right there, Bernie. Uh, I'll be honest, I for one actually bought all the tracks uh, that you could buy for Rallycross and this is actually one of my, this is probably my favourite track that Rallycross has to offer so um, it's a shame to see such a small turnout but hopefully it'll grow in popularity and um, next time we run here well, there will be uh, 32 or 42 cars or something like that ready to ready to race and rock and roll. Yeah definitely so if we look at the race standings at the moment folk, folks we've got Glenn Postlethwaite leading he's got seven tenths of a second over Cohen Attard Daniel Acklin sitting in third Luca Giacomin fourth and rounding out your top five is Lachlan Smith the drivers looking like missing out at this point is Bo Elbert he uh, he came out stuck on the opening lap uh, Mark T Lee and Daniel Aish. Yeah, so uh, just in the chat in the server, actually, Bernie, uh, Bo's uh, made it known that he's not too happy with someone uh, who then may have caused a bit of an altercation on that first lap that's put him out of the race. So we've seen he's had a bit of speed, but uh, unfortunately, the nature of the racing means that sometimes there's contact and uh, that means that some people get taken out. So uh, a shame to see it happen, but hopefully he'll be back next week to uh, give it another shot and uh, show his speed and go for that win. Yeah, and I'll see if I can bring that replay up after this race, folks. One thing I did notice, Brock, is uh, it was rough out there on the first lap, and uh, I did see Bo. He uh, came unstuck just after the jump there, and, uh, yeah, he wouldn't be happy. He was pretty much uh, turned into the uh, the cement wall. Yeah, there's uh, not much else you can do once you get into that cement wall. The steering goes about 180 degrees left hand down and uh yeah it's basically undrivable so a shame to see and the, the nature of the track is that you go from having a nice big wide oval into about a, a car and a half uh, wide corner so um when the cars are racing together and pushing hard with each other there's always a bit of biff and barge here it's not like daytona where you have that nice wide turn one to sort everything out before you head down into the uh right left section of the circuit yeah, and we're riding on board now with Cohen Attard for a run around this course. You can see he's on the infield here and a very tight couple of S's straight up over the jump. And then it's pretty much a mirror image here. He'll go right and uh, then they'll come up to a hairpin, use a handbrake straight back on to the uh, final corner of the main speedway circuit around the main straight and then they do it all again. Yeah, exactly. And we've actually just... Uh, I've just clicked on to Brett Garitas and found uh, he's on his roof. Um, he looks like he's just hit a tyre bundle and that sent him onto his roof and out of the race, unfortunately, Bernie. Yeah, we'll jump back and have a quick look at that and see if we can uh, we can pick this up. That was uh, just at turn one. Yeah, we've got him coming up towards turn one now. Of course, the lap times are around about 42 seconds and uh, we'll see how he's come unstuck there. Yeah, he's pretty much cut it in, hit that tyre bundle, and he had it up on two wheels, and the momentum of just uh, hitting that uh, tyre bundle was enough of a tipping point, so to speak, and uh, put him on the lid. Yeah, and we, we said, uh, we basically said at every event, tyre these tyre bundles, uh, they cause chaos, and you see there one slight misjudgment of how the car turns in and you nick that tyre barrier, and it's all over Red Rover, so... Um, yeah, it's, uh, the, the tyre bundles are new with Rallycross, um, having them in the middle of the corner to avoid uh, corner cuts and that sort of thing. And they uh, they do well to make sure people don't uh, don't cut corners and cheat because uh, it just takes the cars out instead. 
Oh, definitely. And uh, they are brutal, that's for sure. But uh, looking at your top eight at the moment, Glenn Postlewaite the is still leading. He's got a gap now of 1.4 seconds over Cohen Attard in second. Cohen's driving, of course, the Ford Focus there, trying to hunt him down. Not many Ford Focuses out there in uh, this heat. Lots of VWs. Third is Daniel Ackland. 3.1 seconds down. Then we've got Luca, and I'm sure from last week he'll bear in mind to make sure he uses all his jokers this time by, because uh, if you missed out last week, folks, he used one of his jokers, and he got penalised 10 seconds for not using the other one, uh, which is an iRacing rule. We can see now Luca's all over the back of Daniel, and they're fighting for third and fourth at the moment, Brock. Yeah, so uh, we're actually coming into, I think this is the, coming up into the last lap, so Gia Komen could, uh, he'll be into the semi-finals, but this is uh, all for bragging rights, so he'll give it his all, and uh, it'll be interesting to see, and I think actually, no, nah, they've all just come across the finish line there, so Luca's going to still sit there in fourth, but that's going to pop him through into the semi-finals as uh, some of the guys do some burnouts. Yeah, and one thing I've noticed here, the uh, the joker on this circuit is rather interesting. Basically, uh, they're not going to gain a lot by using it, but if they use it correctly, they should be able to undercut uh, the drivers in front of them. However, the re-entry, that has a lot to be desired, I think. Yeah, that's, uh, the joker lap here is... Uh, you could almost call it dangerous the way you sort of re-enter because basically you're trying to do a flick into the corner that everyone else is trying to flick into. So uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, some guys choose to use theirs, excuse me, when they're all in the pack uh, and that can cause some serious chaos coming in the turn one. So um, I'll be interested to see in the, in the further races how that goes and also just how much of an advantage we've seen at Daytona. It was about two and a half second advantage, two and a half to three second advantage gain from doing that joker. But here it's probably around the one second. We'll have to check in the other races. But um, I think that uh, it'll be interesting to see. And like you said, if they use it wisely, the strategy could work out. And that's what we've seen in all the other races. That joker lap is key to success for some. And we saw Emily Jones last week. She used the two joker laps at the end uh, and just managed that gap throughout the race to make sure that she uh, she knew exactly what she was doing and could win that race. Yeah, and the joke is not going to be anywhere near as uh, beneficial as we've seen in the past. Last week they gained, what, about one and a half seconds and uh, on Daytona Long, no, it wasn't Daytona Long, it was the other circuit we went to, they gained about three seconds. Tonight I think they're going to be using it mainly to uh, to try to jump the car in front. But that re-entry, I did see at the start uh, three cars used that joker and the re-entry, there was a bit of panel run rubbing as they went into turn two onto the dirt there. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be... Um the rest of tonight's going to be interesting. Like I was saying earlier, the cars are starting, like they have to go down, they start three wide. So they've got to go from three wide on the oval potentially down to two wide at most um, at the at the turn one. And then they've got to go down into single file, preferably coming into that left-right chicane and then into the jump. So it's, it's going to be messy out there tonight, Bernie, I reckon, and uh, I think we're going to see a few incidents and potentially some unhappy drivers when those incidents occur. Definitely. Well, we've already seen one unhappy driver, and if we, uh, and that was uh, Bo Elbert. But uh, let's have a look at the drivers that are going through now. Uh, for those joining us just now, folks, it's a bit of a different uh, uh, layout of the way this uh, these heats are going to go because we only had 22 drivers turn up. So basically, they've run two simultaneous. Uh, qualifier, last chance qualifier heats. Out of those, uh, eight will be uh, going forward. So out of the one we've covered, Glenn Postlethwaite took the win, Cohen Atthard second, Daniel Lackland third, Luca Giacomin fourth, fifth, Lach Lachlan Smith sixth, Mark T. Lee seventh, John Schultz, Brett Greedis, he's the last one to go through. And unfortunately, we say goodnight to Bo Elbert and Daniel Aish tonight. Yeah, so it looks like Brad will still get through, even though he ended up on his roof uh, in that race. So he'll he'll make it through to that semi-final, um, and it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top. We've already seen tonight that uh, the rally cross throws up some challenges, and unfortunately, contact is part of the game. And 
I don't know if iRacing quite has, for some contacts, the, the damage models uh, completely locked down. Uh, and that sort of ruins races when somebody gets a tap and their steering goes right hand down. You know, you can't you can't do much and keep your speed up after that. So with the tie barriers, the potential for contact and chaos, so it'll be interesting to see how these semifinals and then the final goes tonight, Bernie. Yeah, it certainly will. And, and basically what we're going to see after this is eight are going to go through. And then uh, from what I understand, we're going to go back to our heat racing and they're going to put them all together. They can have 16 cars cars racing around this track believe it or not i can't imagine 16 cars on the track at once but uh, the admin are no doubt uh, looking at how they're going to run the uh, the rest of the evening and no doubt it's going to be very entertaining yeah well um it's uh, a little bit of an unknown for us but that just makes things more exciting there's nothing like a little bit of mystery to spice up the night bernie so uh i'm i'm curious i'm looking forward to it and as always rallycross throws in some great racing so i think uh coming up for the rest of the night this circuit uh it's it's an interesting circuit as well you've got obviously the oval part of the circuit which is quite fast but then the infield is very much uh all about car control and really lining the car up properly so overtaking spots there are a few um probably the hairpin leading back onto the oval will be a very crucial one if you get that handbrake turn right and get the drive you should be able to get up the inside of someone. Also, a potential for contact there. If you drift a bit too wide, you'll hit someone and there's almost a bit of a blockade there uh, for the other guys coming through. So there's a lot of potential for great racing, but also contact, and it's it's going to throw a spanner in the works at some point. Yeah, definitely. And I'm going to stick my neck out. I'm predicting we're going to get two heats of eight each, and uh, out of those heats, five of each will go through. But uh, let's see if I'm on the money. Basically, what we're waiting for now, folks, is for the other server to come up. No doubt Brock is uh, madly hammering his keyboard, waiting for it to come up. As soon as it does, we'll go to a break, then we'll come back and we'll bring you all the action. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting night, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm just having a quick chat with Brett Garitas. He's just given me an update on the on the heats format, and I just want to make sure I'm getting it uh, getting it through correctly. Okay. Hey, if the server isn't up just yet, I am uh, smashing my keyboard trying to uh, make sure I'm up to date with that. You're very right there, Bernie. Okay, while Brock's uh, getting the, the latest, folks, a little bit of a plug. This Friday night, the Australian Online Supercar Championship is back on Double R TV. It's a 650 Enduro we're kicking off the evening or the series with, and uh, we will be live at uh, 7.45 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. So I don't know about you, Brock, but I'm very excited to have the, uh, the V8 Supercars coming back on. It's... Uh, been a fairly short break but probably too long a break to miss out on some good v8 supercar action yeah it's, uh, it's one of my favorite things to do on a friday night after work is uh, i finish at about 8 30 on a friday night and get home just in time to kick the feet up and turn on the aosc race so that's always really fun to watch and um i think oh, i'm really keen for it no v8s over the summer period and christmas is uh, a killer for me so I'm, I'm keen to see it back and we always get some great racing and as we saw last year, the uh, the fight down went really down to the wire between uh, the McMullen and Warren, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and actually, just just a quick update here. So it'll be 16 car heat um, from the uh, from the two uh, heats that were just run. Then the top 12 from that will transfer to another to another heat, and then the top eight from that will go through to the final. Okay. So we've got uh, three more races coming up for you folks tonight. And just as I say that, the first of those heats has come up now with uh, 16 people coming into that one. Okay. So we're going to go to a very quick break, folks. When we come back, we will bring you that action and uh, stay tuned.
Hi there folks, welcome back to Double R TV's live coverage of the Rallycross Super Series. As you can see, uh, the drivers are out there at the moment uh, practicing. They're going to have a five minute practice, will be less than that. Then we're going to be treated to a 10 lap race. They have two jokers up their sleeve for that 10 lap race. And uh, Brock, you might be able to fill the viewers in on a bit more detail on how many drivers are going to go through and uh, how many we expect are going to miss out. So we've got a 16 car race here uh, to all the viewers. We uh, 16 cars is the most I've seen in a rallycross race ever. So this is going to be a very interesting race. Now we'll see 12 of the drivers from this race proceed to the next uh, to the next heat, uh, and that'll be and eight drivers from that next heat will go through. So we're going to lose uh, four drivers in this heat, and then another four drivers in the next, and end up with our top eight for the night as. Uh, Looks like practice has just finished off and all the drivers are going to start lining up now as we get ready for what could be a very, very crazy race, Bernie. Yeah, it's going to be um, absolutely mental, I think. But uh, let's have a look at the grid so you can see where your favourite driver is going to start. So it looks like Daniel Ackland will start on the front row. He's joined with Glenn Postlewaite and Michael Healy. Second row tonight, we have Mark T. Lee starting out of fourth. Clifford Chapman, fifth. Six is Cam Taylor. Out of the third row, we have Gavin Sadler. He's joined by Cohen Attard and John Schultz. Fourth row, out of tenth, Lewis Hewitt. Brett Garitas and Lachlan Smith in 12th. Out of 13th, Christopher Simpson, Dan Palia and Bob King. Then uh, Luca Giacomin, he's going to bring up the rear in 16th position. But I tell you what, uh, Brock, I don't know how I'd play this. Um, it's going to be mental. Uh, take it easy and hope you survive. And I think we've had someone jump the start. That was um, Michael Healy. Healy. Yeah, yeah he rolled forward there. So um, he will most definitely get a penalty from that. As we go green now, I'm trying to keep eyes everywhere in the field at the moment. They're three wide coming through the oval there. Um, everything's relatively clean. Someone's got the tap in the back there. That was one of the uh, SSR cars. But, okay, a few people are taking their joker here, Bernie. This is going to be interesting as they all come up to turn one. And, oh, they're crashing. There's two around and four have hit into turn one. It's, uh, it's a bit mental. Yeah. And someone's over. <laughs> Oh. That's exactly right. That's uh, the race organiser, Mr. Gavin Sadler. He is on the roof and out of tonight's event, so uh, he won't be a happy camper. But at the moment, we've got Ackland leading Postle's weight. Then we've got Michael Healy in third, but there's a massive question mark over a jump start on him. And uh, Mark T. Lee, let's have a look at this. Uh, Cohen Attard sitting in fourth, fifth, Daniel Ackland sixth. Lewis Hewitt and Bob King. He's already up to seventh. He started in 15th, but uh, the chaos has really helped him. Yeah, so uh, he's managed to sort of wind his way through the pack there and uh, has come out come out in a fairly good position as we've had another couple of cars uh, at turn one come together. Um, not quite sure who that is. I'm just trying to find out now. Bob King's made it through there. Um, yeah, can't quite tell there. I think Chris uh, Clifford Chapman might have had some contact with uh, Brett Garitas there, Bernie. Yeah, and we can see them coming down through the infield now. Uh, Clifford is battling Brett here. Clifford's got the upper hand, sitting in 10th. Brett in 11th. At the moment, the driver's in trouble of being uh, having their night end is Gavin Sadler. Well, his night has ended. He's in the pits. He's done and dusted. Christopher Simpson, he's currently sitting in 15th. Um, the others that we'll have to keep an eye on is Mark Lee and uh, potentially uh, Lachlan Smith down there in 13th. Yeah, uh, Lachlan's been up, up a bit further um, than where he is now in other races, so he is quite a ways behind. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to catch up. Mind you, he does only have to make up one spot to make it into that next round of heats. So we'll see how he goes. He's got John Schultz up ahead of him, who was with us last week as well. Uh, I'll be interested to see if he'll be able to nab that 12th spot. Excuse me, as we've got another couple of people in the background of that shot spinning around. Uh, it's just uh, it's a bit of chaos here tonight, Bernie. It's an absolute, uh, yeah, we'll use the word chaos. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> we will see now. We're expecting it, weren't we? are putting 16 cars on a rallycross course. Uh, the experiment, one could say, um, may not have been as successful as one may have wanted. But... Uh, we're riding with Lachlan Smith now. He's down two from where he started, up to 11th. He's now after Dan Palia, as you can see, just ahead, uh, clearing the jump here. 
Yeah, so he's uh, he's after those spots, and it's uh, it's good to see that he's made it up to 12th. He's obviously clawing back some positions after a not not such a great start. He may have just been caught up in some of that carnage, but um, if he maintains 12th place, uh, not too sure what's going on with uh, Joe Collapse and everything. Keeping up with Joe Collapse for 16 cars is a bit difficult, uh, but he looks like at the moment he'll make it through, provided there are no mistakes. As he just whacked the tyre bundle coming through to the Joe Collapse, I think that was him anyway. Yeah, and he's uh, whacked the concrete wall as well, but he continues on. Uh, hopefully with not too much damage for his car, Bernie. Yeah, and meanwhile up front, we've got Cam Taylor. He's leading Michael Healy by five tenths of a second. Michael's just hanging on to that position over Glenn Postlewaite. Now, big question mark over Michael. We saw him clearly jump that start. So I suspect he's going to get a penalty added on the end of this race and that could affect him big time because they're lapping around here 42 seconds a lap 10 second penalty around here is massive yeah so that 10 second penalty uh based off of my live timing screen here would probably put him back to about eight or ninth so he may actually still slip in if it is a 10 second penalty i'm not too sure about the rally cross penalty for a jump start um and I'm just watching some awesome battling here uh, between, it's Ackland and Adart, I think. It is, yeah, they were just about going side by side across the oval and drifting up into each other nearly. Um, they're nice and close and you've got uh, Healy and uh, Taylor here as well, along with Glenn Possewait. This is an awesome little five car battle pack for the lead, Bernie certainly is and we're riding with Cohen Attard here at the moment as they come through the infield over the big jump in front of the grandstand I'll tell you what if you're a spectator here you'd be treated to all the action because if we uh, jump up on the grandstand you can pretty much see everything around this circuit yeah my uh, my camera view Bernie is basically from the top of the grandstand and following the cars around it's a beautiful view and you get to see a bit of everything so uh, and in this race, you're going to want to see a bit of everything because they get nice and close through uh, uh, turn one, two, three there. It's Cam Taylor. He runs a little bit wide as well. Um, he looked like he tried to drift it in there to get the better turn in, but just wasn't quite working for him. I wonder if Healy is going to want to try to get past him to just make more of a gap because Luca G. Komen is actually... People are actually catching up to this battle pack as they're battling, so that means more time that he's losing if he does have a penalty there waiting for him. Yeah, that's right. He'd probably be pretty keen to clear them. <laughs> that that hairpin's quite uh, amazing, isn't it, the way they navigate that? But we can see at the moment uh, uh, Posse and Cohen Attard. Cohen looks like he's got the upper hand here. As we can see now, Healy using the Joker. You can see just as they re-enter, they pretty much enter where the other cars are wanting to use the... Uh, the apex and he just got uh, oh. hip and shouldered out of the way he returned serve and that was on uh, Glenn Postledweight who uh, he returned serve on there but uh, it wasn't Glenn that uh, gave him the hip and shoulder at first I think that was uh, Attard yeah Attard um, I think coming through the hairpin he actually ran up into Postledweight um, and then has done a, uh, I think I'm not sure if there was too much uh, hip and shoulder between Adard and Healy. I think Healy just ran a bit wide and Adard managed to sort of make the most of it. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, Adard in these last couple of laps has really come up through the pack. Um, and Healy, I think, has just... Yeah, he's just gone back to the pit lane. So he has retired from this race, Bernie. Yeah, I think he's probably thought this race was done and dusted. But uh, yeah, he's retired. I'd say he's looked at the penalty and decided that... Uh, continuing for one more lap probably is going to prolong the pain but that will mean he will pretty much miss out and uh we'll go through the drivers we're going to lose very shortly but at the moment it's all cam taylor he's leading by 1.7 seconds over cohen attard as they come across the line third will go to glenn postles weight followed closely by daniel ackland and rounding out your top five will be lewis hewitt um, yeah, actually, on my timing screen here, Bernie, Lewis has jumped Daniel, so there may have been... Yeah, Lewis has actually jumped Daniel in the end there uh, and grabbed fourth place off of him. So out of this, from what I understand, a 12 will go through, is that correct? Uh, that is correct from what I've read from Mr. Sadler. He's uh, said that the top 12 will transfer through and the next race we'll have is a 12-car heat. 
All right, so the top 12 that will be going through to the next heat is Cam Taylor. He took the win tonight. Cohen Attard coming home second. Glenn Postlewaite third. Then we've got Lewis Hewitt, and uh, that sounds like a band to me, Louis Hewitt and the News. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fifth is Bob King. He he did an awesome job, didn't he? Up six positions, one of the biggest movers in uh, the field tonight. Uh, Luca Giacomin comes home in sixth. Daniel Ackland seventh. Brett Garitas up seven positions to come in eighth, ninth, Dan Palia, tenth, John Schultz, 11th, Lachlan Smith, Clifford Chapman. He's the last one that will go through out of this uh, crazy heat of 16. And uh, then Michael Healy just misses out, as well as Mark T. Lee. Gavin Sadler, we saw him on the roof, and uh, Christopher Simpson, he he also misses out. So uh, down to 12 drivers, folks. Out of the next heat, we're going to lose another two, and then we're going to be down to the top 10 for the finals. Yeah, so that was, uh, I think that was as chaotic as we predicted, Bernie. We had people on their roof spinning around, hitting tie barriers. It's uh, everything you want from a rallycross race and more. So um, Cam Taylor impressed in that one. He's been with us for just about the whole series and uh, he's had a lot of speed under him and basically every race that, ha- that uh, he participates in, he just gets better. Uh, so I'm really keen to see how he goes, not only in this in these last couple of races, but also uh, towards the end of the series and where he ends up. Uh, Cohen Adard, Glenn Possilwaith, Lewis Hewitt and Bob King. Yeah, Bob King fifth. Uh, we've, we've said it the whole time. He has speed and luck has not been on his side, but maybe tonight will be the night that he can jump up and take a podium or a win, Bernie. Yeah, it'll definitely be uh, something to watch, that's for sure. But uh, one thing, I think, 16 cars on a rallycross circuit, not sure if that experiment uh, has been quite successful as a number of drivers uh, at the moment. A little bit unhappy, and uh, no doubt we're going to see a few more uh, become unhappy in the next race. And uh, it's the nature of the, the racing, though, isn't it? And everyone can't win. And as the night goes on, we have to say goodnight to uh, the drivers who either – through bad luck or incidents, they uh, they don't uh, get to continue on. Yeah, there's a bit of uh, uh, you're talking about people being a bit unhappy. There's a bit of chat in the uh, Discord at the moment um, about some of the driving standards in that race. I'm not too sure. I, I'm not going to comment on any of the matters because uh, it's rally cross racing, so it's very hard to find the line between what's acceptable and what's not. Um, but yeah, there are a few people that certainly aren't happy uh, to uh, take people out or hit them hit them as hard as they can. As you as you and I both know, these rallycross cars can be pretty uh, pretty crazy, and sometimes you just drift them out a bit too wide, and it's all uh, all without malice. But uh, hopefully, in the next race, there won't be too much trouble, and uh, all the drivers can get along nicely. Yeah, and, uh, it was sort of bound to happen. I saw three drivers take. Uh, I'm just trying to get to the uh, the green flag here, and we'll see if we can actually get a replay. No, we can't. Just my luck. Uh, let's have a look here. See if we can actually get the start of this race and sort of uh, unpack a little bit of uh, what we saw here. Yeah, I've killed the overlays. Well, that experiment failed too. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, deary me. One minute, folks. Uh, Oh, boy, goodness. There, close that. As you can see, they're racing. (laughs) We've missed two starts here, and this is a replay. How hilarious. But just have a look as they come through here, and uh, you can see them taking the... uh, the Joker, and uh, we'll see if we can actually get a decent view of how it unpacked. You can just see the chaos now. We had cars sideways before round, uh, the first corner, and that was c- partly caused by the re-entry of the guys taking the Joker, and we were talking about that earlier. We've also got other cars that have had to go on, and uh, I can see why people would be unhappy, but its I don't think it's any fault of anyone's. It's just the way... Uh, You've got 16 rallycross cars all trying to wrestle into a very tight left-hander. Yeah, you're definitely right there. And uh, that it is problematic because the way you take that corner, you sort of go out wide and dive into the apex. And then as you're diving into the apex, there's all of a sudden a car there that's taken their joker lap. So, uh, yeah, it's a... 
it's probably not the best planned joker lap um, and as you can see if people take it on their first lap they uh, carnage ensues basically because people don't know where to go and they have to lock up the brakes to avoid it and yeah it just uh, it, it goes crazy and with 16 cars on the track too I think we had uh, I think I saw four or five people take their jokers on that first lap so that's four or five people trying to get back into the flow of traffic and uh, it just it, it never goes down well yeah, and even um, the Joker, there's not really much of an advantage in even using it, quite honestly, because because of the way the entry and the exit is. I think it compromises your exit speed, but it is what it is. It's the way they designed this circuit, and uh, all the drivers are just going to have to uh, have to deal with it. I think. Yeah, and uh, just as we've been talking, the server has just popped up Fantastic. for this uh, next race. Fantastic. So we're going to go to yet another break, folks. When we come back, we will be uh, bringing you all the action of the top 12. Hi folks, welcome back to Double R TV's live coverage of the Double R TV Rallycross Super Series. As you can see, there's 12 drivers out there at the moment, warming up, putting the last race behind them and getting ready. Now out of this uh, Brock, 10 of them will go through to the final and we'll be saying goodnight to the bottom two. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, I believe it's... Uh... <laughs> Check the format. I think it was eight people go through to the final. Okay, and um, we've got ten running. Uh, yes, yes. So it'll be the top eight will go through to the final, uh, is what I'm reading here. So just to spice things up a bit, I think usually it is ten people that go through to the final, but uh, tonight it'll be just the top eight. Yeah, and uh, for the viewers just joining us, we only had 22 take to uh, the track tonight. We suspect it uh, could be because this is a paid track and not many people have purchased it. But um, it is what it is, and uh, we've still got a lot of racing ahead. We've got this semi-final coming your way, then we'll end the night with the final. But I tell you what, Brock, I can't believe we're in round four of this six-round series. We've pretty much only got two more weeks to go, and the Rallycross will be, uh, we'll be saying goodbye to because our current or our normal programming will start to resume from there. 
Yeah, it's a uh, pretty unbelievable, Bernie. This the uh, last sort of four or five weeks, uh, including you know the Boxing Day week, have just absolutely flown by. So um, yeah, that we've seen some awesome driving across the the four tracks that we've been to, and uh, I'm really excited for the last couple of rounds and ending it on a positive note and seeing some great driving and potentially a new winner or uh, an up and comer take it to the, some of the regulars. Yeah, and the, the drivers are now gridding. So let's have a look at our grid. On the front gr row, we've got Brett Garitas, Clifford Chapman and Lachlan Smith. Starting out of the second row for the semi-final, Daniel Ackland, Glenn Postlewaite and Cam Taylor. Out of the third row is Bob King, Cohen Attard, Dan Palia. Then we've got Luca Giacomin and Lewis Hewitt rounding out the field. Yeah, so they're all, uh, all lining up. I think they're all, yeah, they're... All revving the engine now, getting ready to go. Waiting on starter's orders here, Bernie. And here we go, green flag. Star, the guy in the middle there. I think that might have been Brett got a pretty bad start. And they're too wide. They're three wide. They've hit, I think, Luca G. Coman's been caught in a bit of a sandwich there and has gone back to the back of the pack. But we've got uh, SSR. It's uh, one, two, three, I think, there, Bernie. As three people have taken their joker lap. And, oh, there's been contact there. I think Adard has hit one of those yeah. SSR cars. And, oh, no. We've got a this couple of... Uh, <laughs> no, a couple of the V-dubs are on the roof. They won't be happy. Happy. Basically, we saw Glenn Postlethwaite and Bob King. They were running one too. Cohen Adard, he used the Joker. He's jumped up to third. But on re-entry, of course, chaos has ensued once again. And uh, we've got Lewis Hewitt in fourth, fifth, Lachlan King. The drivers that have uh, not had a good run is Clifford Chapman. We can see him, he's stranded on the circuit, uh, going absolutely nowhere, and he's about to get clouted if he doesn't get off the circuit. Daniel Ackland also is in uh, trouble, and uh, we've got another driver down there. I'm not sure who that was. They might have called this race, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just having a look at Luca G. Coman battling it out with uh, Lachlan Smith there. They've made contact, but they're still going. They're going to go side by side over the jump, and they've actually made contact over the jump, but they're still side by side, Bernie. This is some great racing by these guys, and nobody's been taken out, so they've kept it uh, clean enough for Rallycross standards, so nobody's ended up on their roof. Great racing by those two. Yeah, it certainly is. We're riding with Luca G. Coman here. And I'm just trying to uh, gather up our thoughts. Eight laps remaining here. So the drivers that have been in trouble out there, uh, Brett Garitas, he's in the pits. His night is done. Daniel Ackland's night also done. We saw him on his roof. And Clifford Chapman, all three of those guys are retired. So uh, the drivers out, eight left. They will all go through to the final. Yeah, you're right there, Bernie. I was actually just having a look to see where Cam Taylor was at because he started in first place, but I think he got caught up in that opening lap melee uh, and is actually back down in eighth. But like you said, top eight go through and uh, that's all we've got left in this race at the moment. So all the drivers out on track at the moment uh, will go through. Now it's just a matter of who wants to win the race and uh, who wants to take those bragging rights and those honours. Yeah, so all action here. It's... I think uh, with this uh, this layout, it's basically hold your breath for the first corner. Everyone crashes, and then uh, we we pick up the pieces and uh, call it from there. Yeah, I think you're right there. And uh, Cam Taylor's nearly had an incident at turn one with uh, that would be Dan Palia. He's taken his joker, but then they've uh, I think had a bit of contact. Yeah, so he's uh, I think he's still going at the moment, but it's not looking too great, unfortunately, for Cam in this race. No, he's down here in eighth position at the moment and uh, basically he's just got to circulate now. I'll tell you what, if if you could get uh, your car out, which is what Daniel Ackland's doing basically, he's out there just circulating, hoping that someone uh, crashes out and he can pick up the pieces and uh, progress on. Yeah, well, he is only a couple of laps down, so um, uh, there's still time for somebody to get knocked out and he can sort of take it take that spot so it is a smart a smart move and if he's happy to trickle around then um he can do that the car is crabbing a little bit so it doesn't look like it's the healthiest machine on earth but he's uh, out there giving it a giving it a crack yeah and we're just riding there with cohen attard as he took 
uh, second away from Bob King here. So looking at your top five at the moment, folks, we have Glenn Postlethwaite leading Cohen Attard by 2.4 seconds, Bob King third, Lewis Hewitt fourth. Running out your top five is Luca Jerkerman. Yeah, so we've got uh, Adar, King, and uh, Gia Komen. They're, they're a few of our regulars in the series. Uh, I think we had Postle Wade as well. We've had in a couple of rounds, and I'm just looking at a bit of a battle actually going on between Hewitt and King, with Gia Komen has actually disappeared. So his internet may be uh, playing funny buggers, and here he is again. So his internet's actually causing him to flash on the circuit, which is going to be a little bit nerve-wracking for Hewitt and King as they try to... Uh, manage uh, manage their driving to not take him out if he all of a sudden reappears. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, we're riding with Bob King now, sitting down there in fifth. And you can see why they've got to use their shoulders to make a move on the infield here. It's so darn tight that if you're going to make any sort of move, you're going to rub panels. But that is what uh, pretty much what Rallycross is about to a certain degree. We'll see what Bob can do here. Can he uh, use a handbrake and swing on the inside? Or is he going to get held out? It looks like he's going to get held out once again. Yeah, I'm just watching him. He's, uh, yeah, he's just going to have to slot him behind. He got a, he got good drive being on that outside line. And he's actually really quite up close to Hewitt here. But Hewitt's going to go a bit defensive coming into turn one. And King's just going to have to slot him behind. And like you said, Bernie, it's a bit of biff and barge really to have to get through because of how tight it is on the infield here. Yeah, you kind of just have to sit back and wait for the oval and hope you can pull a move there. But King is... Uh, He's right up close to the behind of Hewitt there, and I'd say a move is going to be not far away if he can uh, get it, uh, if he can orchestrate it to get it through on the hairpin on the oval. Yeah, here I think he needs to try to get an undercut, which he did that time, but it didn't work. He did undercut, but he undercut into the tyres, so uh, that's not going to help his cause. He's down there in fifth, though. He will progress. Uh, Brett Garitas at the moment, he's circulating out there in ninth position. Daniel Ackland's retired. Clifford Chapman has now retired as well. But uh, it looks like Brett's a lap down and he won't be progressing from tonight. Yeah, so... Um with about a lap and a half to go, um, as long as everyone else makes it to the finish line in one piece, he'll be, uh, we'll be saying good night to Brett, uh, as well as Daniel and Clifford, who, like you said before, have retired and aren't actually in the server anymore. So, uh, Glenn Postlewaite, he's actually been pretty impressive tonight. He's got a, uh, about a two and a half second gap at the moment to the guys behind him, uh, which actually is extended to three seconds, I think, on my timing I'm seeing here, while, uh, Adar has about a second-ish gap over Jair Komen. So, uh, yeah, the gaps are pretty huge here at the moment. Uh, nothing, unless somebody goes for a crazy dive bomb, I don't think we're going to see too much jostling for position. No, the crazy dive bombs, they're, they're stored for uh, the first lap. <laughs> yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was looking at the uh, the track layout, you know, before we came on air, and I'm not an expert, but I wonder why they didn't make the Joker just the full length of the uh, of the circuit. Yeah, look, um, the way they've made it, um, it'd probably be a lot less chaotic and uh, make life a bit easier if they did, and also uh, actually provide a bit of an advantage. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, uh, we were having a look at, uh, I think it was Cohen Attard using the... Uh, the Joker Whoa. and yeah, there's cars crashing left, right, and centre back here. Are uh, using the Joker and quite honestly, there's not much of an advantage at all in in implementing it. Yeah, well, it's uh, it, yeah, it doesn't do much for you. It might make you up a position or two, um, but not much more. Just having a look at this uh, that incident. Uh, yeah, where Cohen Adard went flying out of the map, basically. That was an interesting one. <laughs> so let's jump back to the start and uh, see if we can pick this up. We're going to go to super wide view, super slow mo, and we'll try to unpack this, folks, and uh, and and sort of work out the mess here. I noticed uh, a few guys did take the Joker, and uh, of course, you know, once the cars all converge on that second corner, that tight left, there's nowhere really to go, is there? No, it's um that the, the Joker lap isn't really placed very well because when the people take those jokers, it's um yeah, it straight up just throws them into the traffic. Uh, and yeah, I'm just free watching it now. It 
you had Adard come out and he bumped Taylor and then a couple of other cars came out and they just went straight into the stream of traffic and caused two or three cars to just get absolutely whacked into the wall. So, yeah, it's uh, people want to get that advantage and that's perfectly fine using the Joker lap and everything. And um, it, it's hard because you don't actually see where the car is until they've popped out of the Joker lap on the apex of the corner you're wanting to apex at. So... And also there's that competitive spirit of you wanting to obviously beat that car around the corner and it all just comes together and causes a big mess. Yeah, it certainly does. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> one of the drivers reversing up, trying to get the car straightened up. And uh, what we're going to do now, folks, while we're uh, before we go through the results, let's jump on board with one of these cars for the start and uh, and we'll just see how crazy it is. Have you got any picks on who we should jump on board with? Looks like oh. with Ackland. Who would you like? Yeah, I reckon uh, Ackland might be good. I think he ended up upside down, didn't he? So he might be a good view of exactly what happened. Yeah. So we're going to join Daniel Ackland here for the start, and uh, we're going to show you exactly what these drivers go through on the first lap here at uh, Lucas Oil Raceway. It's uh, going to be a little bit insane. I reckon we're going to see exactly what uh, we've been talking about with that joker lap as they, as they pop out. Yeah, well, he's sitting up there in fourth at the moment. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Yeah. That pretty much sums it up. But, uh, yeah, he was having a good run there, but you could just see when Cohen entered... Um, he got into the car in front of him, and of course there's nowhere to go, and uh, straight into the wall. But that's uh, pretty much how crazy it gets, folks, from the driver's perspective on lap one here in Rallycross at Lucas Oil Raceway. Yeah, they, um, they've got a lot to manage, and these cars, they don't like sitting very nicely um, on the oval either, so they're... they're you have to sort of manhandle them a little bit throughout the, the oval and then you get to this part and we saw, um, just watching through that uh, Ackland's in-car video on that first lap, got very close to his teammates as well coming into that first turn trying to manage the braking so he's not losing time but he's also not going to hit someone around and end their race. Yeah. And uh, we can still see Luca there uh, getting into the side of uh, one of the VW's... Uh, the triumph entry i'm not sure who that was but uh yeah very physical former racing is rally cross and uh no doubt um there'd be a few uh people a little bit uh, annoyed at the moment but as we said that's a that's the sort of uh nature of a track like this but let's have a look at the full race results anyway so posse's going to go through so will cohen attard luca jerkerman Lewis Hewitt in fourth, fifth Bob King, Lachlan Smith sixth, seventh, Dan Palia, Cam Taylor, he just held on there in eighth, and we, as we said, we say goodnight to Brett Garitas, Daniel Ackland, and Clifford Chapman. Yeah, uh, unfortunately we've always got to say goodbye to say goodbye to a few, but now we've got our final set, and uh, yeah, we just got to wait for the server to pop up, but. Uh... Yeah, based off what we've been seeing here, uh, we might be in for some interesting racing provided um, the whole field doesn't get taken out at turn one and it's just whoever can uh, limp home to the finish line. Uh, but maybe maybe we'll see less people taking that joker lap on the first lap to avoid the carnage or maybe they'll all take their joker lap on the first lap. So um, there's no carnage at all. It's just like a normal racing line. You never quite know what's going to happen in Rallycross, Bernie. Yeah, I reckon if I was starting out a first, I'd probably just use it to cover them all off, you know, to make yeah. sure that I could enter into turn one first. But I have a feeling this circuit is definitely designed not for big fields, but it'd probably be really well suited to six cars um, because of how tight it is through the infield there. Big fields lead to big carnage and uh, and big action that sort of uh, is over pretty quickly. Yeah, and we've actually just got the last server up now, so that'll be, uh, just for our viewers to remind them, uh, that'll be eight drivers from that last heat have gone through to that final, so uh, we may actually see a slightly less crazy uh, final here with, like you said, less drivers, meaning uh, less potential for uh, incidents there to Bernie. Yeah, definitely. And uh, going to our final break, folks, we will come back for the final here. Thanks for joining us on Double R TV, whether you're joining us on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, 
Periscope or Mixer. Back in a moment. Welcome back, folks, to the WRTV Rallycross Super Series live coverage. We're about to embark on the final heat or final race for tonight, and we're down to the top eight. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top here and uh, exactly how that first couple of corners uh, unfolds. Yeah, definitely, Bernie. And uh, we've got a few of our regulars in here and guys that have shown that they've got uh, some... A good skill underneath them so hopefully we'll see a good race tonight and uh yeah we've uh, in the in the discord as well there's been a bit more chat about the last couple of race uh, about the last couple of races and the driving standards again so there's definitely uh uh some feelings of uh anger from some of the driving and uh, i think it's just it's potentially part of that turn one chaos is uh people are getting a bit annoyed at the fact they're getting taken out but there's not much you can do with that joker lap you got nowhere to go basically you can't cut the track behind the tire bundle you just have to follow the track and hope nobody will hit you or you won't hit anybody else so it's a bit unfortunate but uh, hopefully these drivers will work their way around it and uh everybody will make it through to the end of this one yeah it's a pretty uh pretty brutal uh joker section that's for sure which we've seen tonight we'll see how they go you can see a few of the uh um, V-dubs there just practicing but uh, we're about to get started here so let's take you through the grid and uh, let's uh, brace ourselves for the final race here tonight so Glenn Postlethwaite he's going to start from pole he's joined on the front row with Dan Palia and Lewis Hewitt out of the second row we have Bob King Cohen Attard and Lachlan Smith starting out of seventh is Luca Giacomin and Cam Taylor he's going to start out of eighth position yeah, so uh, Cam unfortunately had a bit of a, mo a bit of a moment getting caught up in all the carnage, and uh, that sort of ended his chance of starting higher up in this race. But as we've seen, uh, anything can happen, and he may well just jump the pack and go to first if uh, chaos ensues. So this is going to be 
it's going to be an interesting one. I think all the cars are on the grid now. Yeah, we've got eight cars out there, so we're just waiting for starters' orders. As the revs are rising now, Bernie, and it's going to be interesting. Will they go three wide through the oval? We've got the green flag now. Great start there from, uh, I think that was Glenn Postlethwaite. Yeah, so yeah. they are they're nearly three wide there, but, oh, yeah. Hewitt's lost a little bit, but uh, not made contact with anyone, so everyone's going to make it through. We've got three drivers taking, four drivers have taken that uh, joker lap. And, oh. oh, no. Yeah, bit of contact there, but everyone is still going. A bit more contact, and the lead has been turned around. Yeah. That's, uh, that's half the field's been taken out there in one foul swoop. And, yeah, wow. Yeah, that's not going well, Bernie. Um. Oh, no. At Cohen Attard and... Um, Cam Taylor just hidden. Adard's actually on the infield of the infield. Yeah. Let's have a look at that replay. <laughs> so, what can one My say? Goodness. All, I, all, <laughs> I, all I can say is pretty ordinary, really. But uh, let's have a look at this. So you can see Adard, he's got in the back of Puzzle weight there. He's also got one of the new Lon um, cars on the outside. They've just all concertina up at that point. Tire bundles going. Adard's pushing possible weight. Let's keep an eye on what happened to Adard. I think at this point, tempers have frayed. And uh, we'll just have a look here, exactly what goes on as uh, they re-enter. So you can see Adard there on the inside of the new line entry. They actually hit mid-air. And, uh, yeah, and that's uh, put paid to... That race. Yep, well, there are some nice big gaps now. Um, we've got Lewis Hewitt up the front. Uh, he's out there by about two seconds at the moment, followed by Dan Polia, and then oh, Cam Taylor nearly just got uh, hit by Luca Giacomo coming out of the Joker lap there. Uh, but we've still got seven drivers out there circulating. Uh, the, problem is they're not really any of them are really close to each other after the crashes sort of spread the field out a little bit yeah so one of the drivers have asked so how many of those cars actually survived i think three might have got through cam taylor he started last he's up to third and i think uh you know starting at the back of a field like this on a race like this you probably just let them go let them take each other out and then say thank you very much see you later and uh and cam's now up to second position as uh oh, we can see their contact with dan palia you can just see that <laughs> yeah it's still continuing but luke is up to fourth so let's let's have a look at your top five and where they stand lewis hewitt he's leading by a country mile of 2.2 seconds over dan palia then we've got cam taylor he's battling it out with luca jerkerman for third and fourth in fifth position we have lachlan smith and he's battling it out with glenn Postlethwaite. now glenn was a pole leader but it didn't you know in, in this track i don't think it's an advantage starting from pole uh then we've got bob king uh in seventh Ke cohen attard has retired from tonight's race yeah i think uh being in pole position here makes you more of a target than uh gives you more of an advantage because i think he actually got turned around by one person and then got hit by another um and yeah that's just sort of escorted him right down the order to sixth place so he'd had great form all night we saw in the last race he was leading by um over two seconds over two or three seconds and he's just uh yeah lady luck has not uh not been in his corner for tonight's race bernie and we see it so often that uh, luck just doesn't fall away of some of these drivers and they just get taken out yeah, and he, he utilised the joker on the first lap, as we thought may be beneficial uh, to cover off the field, but unfortunately that covered him off for turn two, but not turn three. Yeah, and uh, just as we were talking then, Luca Giacomo took another one of his jokers and uh, actually hit Dan Palia and then turned and then turned around uh, into the tie barrier. So that joker lap is just uh, becoming more and more troublesome as the night goes on. Uh, I don't think the drivers are going to be particularly fond of this track, and I reckon uh, if it was to be used again, uh, we wouldn't see a great turnout again, uh, unfortunately. But that joker lap just wreaks havoc by the looks of it. Yeah, I think if uh, we're going to run this circuit again, I'd be suggesting get rid of the joker completely 
and uh, and let them run on the normal course. But even so, I think it's uh, it's going to take a, a quite a bit of uh, um, uh, driver uh, patience to to race closely around here, maybe. Yeah, well, as I mentioned earlier, Daytona is a very different track in that it's um, uh, it allows for a lot of wide racing through those first, like that last turn, and you can really fan out after the start. Here, you've got to get it all together for that first uh, first turn into the infield because it goes down to about one car width, um, and you need to be sorted out there or else yeah, you're in trouble. So uh, it's perhaps coming from, and also Phoenix as well, yeah, you still have that space to fan out before you're... Um, just go straight into it. So I don't know, maybe it's that. And the guys are used to that. And this is just a bit different to what they're used to in racing. Yeah, it's still got some close battling going on though. Um, out of, I, I guess we were fortunate that most of the field crashed and uh, and uh, didn't spread out too far. But we can see Luca Jerkman here. He's battling Lachlan Smith for fifth and fourth position, or well, fourth and fifth. As we can see now, uh, Luke has got a very good run there. Dan went way high. No, those Smiths went uh, high. He's coming back on an undercut here on the uh, start finish straight. Two laps remaining, and uh, we'll see what they can do. Well, I think uh, Smith actually just gave Gia Komen there a little bit of a bump on uh, a little bit of Morse code being used there. Um, and letting him know, I'm here, don't make a mistake or else I'm coming straight on through. So these two are actually having, <coughs> excuse me, quite the good battle. Um, be interesting to see who can uh, who can end up on top with uh, just about a lap and a half to go here, Bernie. Yeah, we'll see now Lachlan doing the slide job on the inside there, using the handbrake, it did not pay off. And uh, Luke has just uh, stretched that out to about four car lengths. But uh, if you can get that right, you can get on the inside of the drivers but uh, I think Luca was awake to that we'll ride with Lachlan here as he's just trying to uh, get it back on the dirt through the infield you can see how tight it is full opposite lock there gathered it up and uh, over the uh, the jump yeah there's certainly not a room a lot of room for error sorry on this circuit and uh, you know you, you go a bit too deep and uh, take the corner a bit too uh, bit too close in there and you'll hit a tie barrier you drift out a little bit you'll hit a wall so uh, on that infield you make a mistake and it's uh, yeah your car's gonna have damage that probably gonna end your race There's, the cars are all coming across the finish line now so a top three uh lewis hewitt uh, cam taylor and dan palia so congratulations to those guys uh as uh they've all come across the line and doing a few burnouts now to celebrate the end of uh, the end of the night yeah. yeah, I survived. Look, Mum. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Get the camera. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well done to Lewis Hewitt there taking the win. Cam Taylor came from eighth, come home in second position. It'd be interesting to jump on board with him um, for the start. What do you reckon? And uh, and just see exactly what it looked like from starting from eighth position here. Yeah, well, he's going to have the uh, the best you, I guess, to the field as he comes from the back. So that actually would be quite interesting to look at and uh, see, did he get caught up too much or is that was that his saving grace being at the back of the field? Yeah, well, let's jump on board with him now. And uh, who are we going with? Cam Taylor. Okay. So let's have a look at exactly what it looks like from his point of view and, and where he made those positions. He started out there in eighth, came in out of the other side around about third. As you can see, he got a fantastic start on the outside. He already jumped Luca, and uh, you can see on the inside then we've got Pozzleweight and Cohen Adard. Both of these guys will use their joker and Cam won't. He's gone the high side here. Yeah, so he actually, like I said, he got a lightning start out of there, Bernie, and um, he wasn't so much uh, from the back like we thought he would be, but uh, apparently it's worked in his favour because he's jumped up and he's taken second place. So, um, yeah, he's he's done well to navigate his way through all the carnage and actually come out there in a podium position. Yeah, so he was fortunate, as, as we saw there, he was on the outside of Glenn Postlewaite as Glenn got turned around. He managed to avoid that. He then had Cohen um, on the outside of him um, connecting over the jump, and he managed to survive that as well, which, uh, 
is why he uh, he got such an awesome start. He, he, he was the, probably one of the cars that stayed out of most of the trouble on the night, I think. Yeah, I think so. And um, that comes down to either being in a good position or um, having some having some skill and uh, actually being able to avoid it, use your brakes wisely and sort of work your way around the cars. Yeah. it's uh, Well, folks... Uh, it has been an interesting night, one could say, but let's go through the full race results here and then we'll try and uh, give you our final thoughts if you don't know them already. But Lewis Hewitt, the triple six car, pretty much sums it up, takes the win uh, up three <laughs> positions. Cam Taylor, he comes home in second. Great start from him, awesome driving, um, up six positions. Dan Polia up four positions to come home third. Looking at the guys that missed out, the first one's Luca Jerkerman. Uh, fourth, fifth, uh, Lachlan Smith. Biggest commiserations, I think, to Glenn Postlewaite. He, he was the pole position driver, but unfortunately it all came unstuck in turn three. Uh, Bob King comes home in seventh, and Cohen Attard, our retired E for tonight, uh, is classified in eighth position. Yeah, so, um, look, uh, as we've sort of said through the night, it kind of... Um, wasn't what we wanted and expected from the rate from the guys tonight. A bit too much carnage for our liking. As much as carnage can sort of spice things up in the for the viewers, some good battling throughout a race also does. So, uh, yeah, Matt, I, I'm not quite sure exactly what went on with uh, the racing tonight, but it just looked like I reckon that Joe Collap um, uh, was just basically provided almost the, uh, the cork in the bottle sort of thing and made sure that it was really hard to actually get around those people popping out of there, especially on the first lap. I'm honestly surprised drivers kept taking that uh, joker lap on the first lap when they knew that there was going to be so much carnage. And also when it gives, I guess, such a little advantage um, over, you know, the likes of the Daytona or Phoenix um, uh, joker laps. So... Maybe they'll take that on for next time and learn, but uh, otherwise for tonight, Glenn, like I said, Glenn Postlewaite, the standout, um, he did really well all night. It was the pole sitter in the final and uh, luck just didn't go his way. But got to uh, congratulate Lewis Hewitt uh, and Dan Palia as well for being up there. Cam Taylor's always been um, up on top. Uh, he's always been at the top there, but good to see a couple of uh, newer names up in that top three and fighting it out. Yeah, it was definitely an interesting uh, final, that's for sure. Interesting racing all up, really, and, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they use this track again, what they do about this joker, and or if they put in a, a rule that says there's no jokers on lap one, I don't know. But uh, it is what it is, folks, and uh, interesting circuit. Probably my least favourite rallycross circuits, I would say, from uh, calling them so far. Yeah, in terms of uh, actually racing the circuit, I quite enjoy uh, racing around it and wrestling the car around it. But in terms of commentating and viewing, uh, yeah, it just didn't really provide the same entertainment value that we saw at uh, Daytona and Phoenix where the, the Joker lap really meant something in those races. But in this one, all it meant was, watch out, here comes the carnage train. Um, so... Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going to go on, but I don't think we go to Lucas Oil again in this series, so we shouldn't see that uh, that amount of uh, carnage again, hopefully. Yeah, no, it's... Um, yeah, we've pretty much said it. You know, the, 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 there was quite aggressive driving there, and and uh, that final, my, uh, my heart goes out to Glenn there. He started on pole, he did everything right, taking the joker to cover himself off, but still um, didn't manage to survive. But, you know, rallycross is a brutal sport, but tonight I think they took it to a new level of brutalness. But uh, anyway, folks, looking at our week ahead, Australian Online Supercar Championship will be coming back this Friday night. I'm very much looking forward to it. 6.50 endurance round to kick off the season, and uh, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, I mean, those, uh, I think I I did one of them before. I did the 650 Spa race, and, oh, God, that was a uh, uh, that was a trek and a half to get home with the V8 around Spa. But these these uh, 650 races, anything can happen in them, and uh, they're awesome to watch. And I, I'm more than happily sit through the full sort of three, four hours that it takes to actually get through one of those races. Uh, strategy comes into play. Outright speed and consistency comes into play. 
uh, who your co-driver is compared with who your main driver is. It's there's so much to talk about with uh, the with the endurance races, and it always throws up some controversy as well as some great battling. So it's going to be awesome to uh, to watch that, and uh, it's great that RRTV will be broadcasting it again this year. Yeah, definitely looking forward to it, and there will be uh, more announcements coming your way very shortly, folks. In the next 24 hours, um, stay tuned. There will be some announcements about what else we're covering off. Um, in 2018 but one thing i can tell you it is going to be a very very busy year for for us and it's going to be hopefully a very entertaining year for all our viewers but on that note brock um i think we've pretty much talked this race to death i think they pretty much know our views on it <laughs> and it's probably time to go and crack a bottle of uh, beer and uh Lick, lick our wounds. Not that we have any wounds because we're just up here in the air-conditioned office watching all the other guys get beaten up out there. Yeah, this is the best place to be. We can uh, talk about it all day and, uh, like I said, crack a beer afterwards. But I reckon there are some tempers that have flared tonight and, uh, yeah, there's still a lot of chat going on in that Discord uh, and I feel like that's going to be going off for the majority of the night as people discuss what's happened and uh, either try to find ways to fix it or... Uh, uh, try to make sure it doesn't happen again, but that's for them to talk about. We just do the the fun stuff up here in the com box. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, final uh, results, folks, before we go off. Congratulations to the podium: Lewis Hewitt in the triple six, uh, Cam Taylor coming from eighth to finish second, and Dan Palia third on the podium. So congratulations to to those three drivers. They're the happy drivers tonight and the other 19 are not probably so happy but uh thanks for joining us tonight folks if you've enjoyed the uh, broadcast give us a thumbs up down there and uh and let your friends know if they don't know what we're doing here if you know anyone that's into motorsport let them know about double rtv and um i racing and uh you never know they might uh join the our fantastic hobby here but until uh friday folks i hope you have a great work week and uh i look forward to your company again friday night for the first round of the australian online supercar championship so uh brock i said good night now you can say good night <laughs> 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 yeah uh thanks for having me again bernie it's always awesome to be up in the com box and uh yeah this uh rally cross night certainly threw up some interesting topics of conversation but uh yeah like bernie said stick with rrtv there's some awesome stuff coming up and uh like you said friday night aosc's back 650 endurance race it's gonna be a hell of a lot of fun so come and come and watch tell your friends tell your parents tell your dog get everybody on it and uh we'll see you guys then yeah until friday night folks See you in a couple of days, survive the work week and come and join us. All right, see ya.